Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young. We are here another day this week, and all the basketball stuff is settled down for a little bit, still in a dead period. Don't have to worry at the moment, likely at all. I say, you know, say that with my fingers crossed about having to talk about Jerome Tang leaving again. So that means the focus can shift fully to football, which is fitting the day after basketball season ends officially yesterday with UConn winning the national championship. We can set our sights on the next sport that's going to get going, and that will be football at the end of August. And it just so happens that K-State had an open practice for the media this morning. So there are some things to uh, take away from what was seen out there. And I think the first place to start with this for you, D.Y., is you noted that, hey, there were a couple of guys that were actually out there that practiced one of which is a guy that we heard last week that Joe Klanderman was basically like, yeah, no, he, it would be really nice if he could be out on the field practicing and getting better for us. And that was Uso Sayamalo. So what can you tell us about uh, some of the guys that you, you noted were on the practice field this morning? Yeah, two guys that were on the practice field participating that hadn't been in prior practices that we had seen were obviously you mentioned Uso Sayamalo, but also offensive lineman Carver Willis. The Willis one probably a little bit less pertinent and looked like it was almost designated rest um, in the prior practices that we saw because he was just off to the side. Um, didn't look like anything severe, but he was, you know, padded up today, kind of going going through the reps and it was the, the first team right tackle, actually. So that, that was something interesting uh, of an observation with John Pastore being, you know, relegated to both behind – he and Easton Kilty um, at that point with uh, and then Sam Heck was back as a first team center in the live action that we did see as well with Taylor Portier and Hadley Panzer as the guard. So um, uh, which, you know, we had talked before with had we, we had seen Hadley Panzer take some reps at center today was kind of the flip flop of that with Panzer back at guard and Sam Heck at center. And yeah, Uso, uh, he was in pads too. Uh, I wonder if he uh, probably continued to be limited to an extent. I don't know if you go from nothing to full go um, that rapidly or that abruptly, but obviously a good sign because I, I think they wanted him to get, you know, a, a certain amount of reps here by the end of spring. And with him being, you know, padded up, suited up today, um, they're probably able to do that at least a little bit. And I know that, they, that that's someone, like you mentioned, that, that they think needs a lot of reps because uh, still very young in football years despite you know running out of eligibility, being a lot older than some of the other guys. But he's someone that uh, he needs to see more football to get better. Yeah, it was just the, the Joe Klanderman thing last week where he's asked, you know, because sometimes it, it is in a roundabout way. It's helpful to have some guys out and you can get younger guys in different spots and kind of build depth. Uh, but there are certain guys that even if you're relying on them heavily, you want them out there. Like this would be the same thing if, you know, not wishing any ill will on Avery Johnson, but like if he was a little dinged up and they had to put him to the side, yeah, you feel good because there's talent there, but he's only going to be a true sophomore that's only started one game at quarterback. You would like as much practice time for Avery Johnson as you can get for where it allows. So I think it'll be interesting to kind of see how things move forward for K-State and good developments on Uso and Carver Willis there. Uh, anything else injury-wise? Do you think K-State's been pretty fortunate uh, given the the situation they're in right now with you know maybe avoiding the big injury because it doesn't seem like we've heard of that yet this spring, which is always a kind of a concern. It seems like towards the end of Snyder, it felt like every, every year there was a big spring injury or something, uh, but it seems like K-State's in a good spot there now. Yeah, I think you got some guys still recovering from some off-season surgeries. A, a guys, a few guys dinged up that could be out, you know, a couple more months, a few more months, obviously. But in terms of anything season-ending or catastrophic, I think they've they've avoided anything on that front, which is a good thing. I think, you know, one to maybe keep an eye on not having DJ Giddens out there. He was another guy that wasn't out there today, and I think he got dinged up a little bit. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on but it doesn't seem like it's anything that's going to impact the season at all. Yeah. And I, DJ Giddens is going to get enough pops uh, it come season time that, you know, it's probably not the worst thing for a guy like that to be able to uh, get a couple of days, you know, off of it and, and see where things go. All right. 
Moving on then, another thing that you noted was some other things about the offensive line. You already mentioned Carver Willis was out there, but this is probably the spot that people are going to try to get the most from when you get a look at them before the season starts because really I don't know that we officially know what the order of operation will be on the line, how it's going to look from left tackle to right tackle. So uh, what did you see from the offensive line this morning? I would say just because this was the first time Carver Willis had been available and we saw him at right tackle and Easton Kilty still the left tackle. It seems like at least the leaders in the clubhouse, you got Easton Kilty that seems like kind of the bona fide guy at left tackle because he was that way regardless of who was available and who wasn't. And then right tackle might be more of your battle there between Carver Willis and John Pastore, which again, because he was available today and was inserted back in with the first unit, I would say Carver Willis is the leader in the clubhouse. And then on the interior, I think it's a little bit probably of a uh, wait and see a little bit. I think I think Taylor Porter is going to be one of your starting guards. And I think the other one, depending on who is the starting center, will either be Hadley Panzer or if Hadley Panzer is the center, it'll be Andrew Lion Gang. So I think that – I, and I don't know that there's a necessarily a leader in the clubhouse because I would say from what we have seen this spring, both in clips, you know, on social media or whatever it may be, and in person, it seems like it's a 50-50 battle at center. Uh, I say battle. I think Hadley Panthers probably going to start no matter what, but they're still trying to <laughs> determine where they want Hadley Panzer, whether it be at center or at guard. So the battle, so to speak, would be between Hadley Panther. And Sam Hecht at center or between Adley Panzer and Andrew Langang at guard. Um, I don't know that I'm, I'd be comfortable saying that there's a leader in the clubhouse there. So you're either going to have Andrew Langang start or Sam Hecht start. Um, I would imagine some kind of combination of that with, with Portier and Panzer on the interior. Again, um, not sure there would be a leader in a clubhouse. And I say leader in a clubhouse on the outside because, you know, Willis came back from whatever he was dealing with and was the right tackle right away while Easton Kilty remained the left tackle. The reason why I don't say, oh, that's locked down 100% is because I still think that there's probably time. I don't think anything's uh, being given uh, on April 9th. It wouldn't surprise me if some of these offensive line combinations, decisions aren't solidified, so to speak, until fall camp. Do you you feel pretty good in saying that Kilty will be the left tackle, though? Is that one that you feel... Definitely headed in that. It definitely seems on a fast track and headed in that direction. Yeah, that's and obviously there's a lot of um, I don't know the the best term for it, but he was obviously a guy that was well sought after uh, in the transfer portal and was highly thought of there. So it makes sense that you bring a guy like that in, and he's prepared to probably come in and play the most important spot on your offensive line. So we'll see how it works out. But this is another one of those position groups where you don't have the final answer but you know that you have – you're like in the right area. It would be essentially – K-State football, their roster right now, it's like a treasure map, you know, and you're like, okay, well, X is somewhere in this area. We're in the right spot, but we just got to find it now, and I think that's what they're trying to do. They're not on the other side of the map. They are in the area that they need to be. They're just trying to get their ducks in a row and, and find the right spot. So we'll see how that looks moving forward. Another spot, another position group where there seem to be a lot of solid options right now. It's just waiting to see if somebody is going to rise above as wide receiver. And uh, a name that people are probably still thinking pretty hard about is Keegan Johnson, who was a big get last offseason, was pretty slow starting, started to make some plays down the late stretch of the season. And maybe this year you're going to get the bigger breakout out of Johnson that some were expecting and wanting. Uh, What's the latest on Keegan Johnson? Yeah, something that we've heard, you know, more than one occasion, I think, so far in the spring is that he's just faster and really popping off the page. A guy that's really improved his speed. I think that's one thing we heard. Uh, another thing we heard was Stevens coordinator Joe Klanerman kind of say, you know, talk about a most improved player, a guy that's kind of been someone that's caught his eye. It's been a little bit difficult for a cover for his defense was Keegan Johnson. And just for me today, I know we only get to see – certain stuff, Uh, not a lot of 11 on 11, but a little bit of 11 on 11 and only 45 minutes. It's a very small sample size, but for my money today, I thought Keegan Johnson was the best player on the field. Well, that's probably pretty exciting news for K-State fans to hear, given the uh, situation and and circumstance that 
I think people thought that they were going to get and wanted to be in last year, and then it just didn't work out the best way. But I think it was significant for a guy like Keegan Johnson. He he stays through and, and is going to come for the second season at K-State. And you have now an opportunity where Avery Johnson's ability in both the passing and the run game is going to give the opportunity for some of these guys to um, – probably find themselves a little bit more open at times or in different spots than what they would have with Will Howard just because there's that added dimension to what a defense is going to have to deal with. I, there's just so many ways that I think this K-State offense, It's we know that K-State took a big blow losing Colin Klein, but I think there are a lot of things that suggest this is still going to be a really fun group to watch and in some ways could find a way to make themselves better than what we saw certainly last season. I don't know that I'd go as far as what we saw down the uh, – the stretch run of the Big 12 title team because, you know, you had the talent and you had a lot of things working for you there. But I think with the combination of players that you have and then pair that with the fact that uh, early returns say that the Matt Wells, Connor Riley uh, relationship is is going pretty strong and setting K-State up for success. Yeah, it, it's going to – everything's going to be a work in progress, right, a little bit, especially on the offensive side of the ball when you get a new offensive coordinator – and you're kind of infusing a lot of different pieces. Uh, a lot of things are going to, I guess, be a little clunky at first as everyone's trying to grasp what they're trying to do. Um, not a lot of big changes, but I think there is a chance, you like, right, that you might see a little bit more 12 personnel. I think we've kind of seen a little bit of that, you know, in the spring. I think we saw a little bit of that in the bowl game. What that means is one running back two tight end type of stuff. Um, they got the personnel to, to do that. And, you know, based on that, maybe you only have two wide receiver sets at some time. So I think you'll see some two wide receiver sets, some three wide receiver sets. I think you'll see more pre-snap motions and shifts. I've said that before. It's an observation that I've made. It's almost like Con <laughs> Connor Riley. He's been around a little bit of Courtney Messingham. And he's a little, been around a little bit of Colin Klein. I know I've mentioned this but you're going to get a mix and a combination of the two, not to the point where you're running an antiquated kind of slow-paced offense. A lot of Wildcat taking that from Courtney Messingham? Yeah, I don't think so. But just some of the the concepts and the wrinkles of each one, um, and they're going to kind of marry those philosophies. Like I don't think you're going to get some of the same passing concepts that you got with Colin Klein. I think they'll, uh, they'll be a little bit different in that regard. I don't think you're going to get the pace – the slow, you know, methodicalness of uh, according Messingham. I think he's going to take the best parts of the two, kind of marry him, uh, and that's and we'll see how it looks, right? I mean, but what I've said all along is you do have a very talented quarterback that is very gifted, and Avery Johnson is is the type of guy that's going to make any offense coordinator appear pretty pretty smart. So Connor Riley is fortunate to have him as his quarterback in his first, you know, year, probably two years. Um, and he'll be blessed with that opportunity. And we'll see how he can showcase uh, that skill set. Um, we saw a little bit of Avery Johnson, you know, keepers today. I don't know if you'll see a lot of design quarterback run this year. You have to do some of it or else you're, you're wasting what Avery can do well. But you got to also cap it and qualify it a little bit because you got to keep the kid healthy. Um, and you can't ignore that he's, I mean, you, you covered him as long as I have in high school. Mm -hmm. Kids got a cannon for an arm too. Yeah. He's, he's a quarterback. And uh, as much as, you know, quarterbacks like making plays, I think more than that, they like throwing the ball, throwing the ball is fun. Uh, there, I think there's a reason why when you play Madden or uh soon to be NCAA football, you're going to call more pass plays than you do run plays. Passing the ball is fun. Quarterbacks most definitely think passing the ball is fun and uh, also what gets them paid at the next level. So it'll be interesting to see how things work out. Still more spring ball to go for K-State, and uh, we'll keep you updated with all that going on at kstateonline.com. So head over to On3 and find us there. And if you say, okay, well, I, I know what's going on with the current team, what's going on in the recruiting world, Drew Galloway is the best in the business at keeping you up to date on that. Uh, it seems like every five minutes he's just sending a message to us that says, all right, update on this guy is done. And he, I think he talks to probably more people than uh, half the world does in a week. He's just on top of it. So you can get your K-State football recruiting news there. Also, uh, always scoops going on the transfer portal for K-State basketball 
over on our message boards as well. So lots to do at kstateonline.com. Head on over, check it out if you're not. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with a little bit more on K-State football as we continue on throughout the week. We'll also have a weekly recruiting update with Drew as well. So look forward to that. But for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching this edition of the KSO Show.